This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. It's my great pleasure to introduce Maurice Ohoyan from Stanford University. He's a psychiatrist in uh, the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University, and he's the director of the Stanford Epidemiological Research Center. Uh, he has a, he's a, an unusual background. He has a, a PhD in biology, but he also has doctorates in mathematics as well as computer sciences. And he really joined forces with the sleep community about 15 years ago, where his research began to focus on epidemiology of sleep and mental disorders um, in the general population. And I know from all the research I do, if you're in the mode of writing NIH grants and you have to talk about the significance of your research and the impact on the population, Dr. Hoyan has really given us the references that we need, the data we need to talk about the significance of the problem. So if you need any prevalence data on gender differences, like I do, um, or age differences, we're always citing his wonderful work. So fortunately for the sleep research community, he's uh, joined us, and today he's going to talk about uh, epidemiology and uh, sleep and obesity. Uh, we really owe a great deal of uh, appreciation to him for his contributions to sleep research. So join me in a warm welcome for Dr. Ahoyan. Thank you very much for this introduction. And uh, I, will, uh, I will say that I am uh, bringing you uh, maybe uh, uh, some interesting data, I, I hope. But uh, like all the epidemiologists, we are boring people because we are coming with a lot of numbers. And I am probably one of the worst because I hate to give interpretation of my data. I stay on the facts. With obesity, is easy. It's very easy for one big reason, is that the numbers are so, uh, so I have nothing to disclose. I am supporting, supported only by the NIH, and I have no other conflict of interest. So my, my goal here will be to examine how obesity is related to sleep duration in the general population. I, I want to underline the fact that it is the general population. This is totally different of what you can have in a clinical population. The general population is for sure including the normal, between quotes, population. And here it's all the interest, but also the limitation. It means that these people are not sick also, or you have all the people patient, non-patient, inside of the general population. The second thing is to examine the importance of obesity in mental and medical disorder. Look, the common sense is saying always that if you have a mental disorder, you can become obese. And if you have a medical disorder, for sure you can lose weight, but you can, in the first time, in the first movement, have problem of obesity. So it's interesting to look at that. So I have a sample. This sample is, in fact, a longitudinal sample that was collected since 2003 until now. And here I will present only the result on the last wave that we have done. So that is the fourth wave. Is only results that are cross-sectional. Why only the cross-sectional data? 
for one big reason is that it's too much complicated to present longitudinal data orally. I think that you, we must have time to look. And anyway, the data are so spectacular for uh, obesity that it doesn't need the longitudinal support. So we have a sample of practically 20,000 adult individuals with a participation rate, I attract our attention on that, of 83.2% participation rate. I am an epidemiologist, I would say things awful. If you are, with a, when you see a paper with less than 60% of participation rate, don't read it. Don't lose your time. Put it in the trash. Also, if it's totally original with the thing, no meaning. You take a piece of money, you throw it in the air, you have exactly the same result. <laughs> Don't play with that. I think that it must be a limit of what is acceptable and is not acceptable to have too much refusal rate in a study, in epidemiological study. I understand the first, this kind of limitation, but you must know that. The second thing is that you must look if what is said, like general population, is truly representative. Here we are representative of 15 states in America, with so 138 million, and this was verified with the official census of America, one by one individual. So I am telling you this is properly kosher. The age range is between 18 and 102 years. I don't go in the detail of the methodology. You can find it inside of uh, the publication. So what information we were collecting? Very quickly, sleep disorder diagnosis according to the DSM-4R and the ICD-2. We were collecting also the mental disorder diagnosis according to the DSM-4TR and we were collecting the organic disease according to the ICD-10, all the diagnoses. And to finish, we were collecting all the psychotropic consumption according to the roster of pharmacological compounds, and I add that we have all the information on the other medication that were taken. Also, the over-the-counter drugs were taken into account in all the logistic regulations that you will see, we were taking into account this, uh, the over-the-counter uh, drugs, and you know that they have a big influence on, on our weight. So, prevalence of obesity. Let me explain you before to go with the results how I did that. Here you have the percentage. Here you have the BMI. You see inferior to 18.5, 18.5 to 24.9, I would say normal population. 25 to 29.9, I will say overweighted. And more than 30, I will say obese. If you agree, I go with the result. Here you have the age distribution that is very important, 18 to 24. I want going by 10. I like that. I am a mathematician. I prefer to cut directly round. If you have, we are speaking of obesity in America, in 15 states of America, so it's representative of the 300 millions, in fact. This is a normal population, and you see they have a normal weight. It's very low, the normal weight, in all the category of age, very low. Now, sit down tight. <laughs> Between 18.5, 24.9, you see 43% between 18 and 24 have a normal weight. It's very bad. Only 43% when you are between 18 and 24, we have a problem. I will not interpret that. I will say we have a problem. After the other age, you see you have still 30% of the people more than 65 that have 
a normal weight, you have 25%, but it means that all the rest is not with a normal weight. So I look now more in detail. We have a problem, I told you, and it's not a little problem. The problem here for the overweight, this is overweight people. And you see, okay, for 1824, not so many, but still 35%. My gosh, it's, it's, it's a big number. 42% here, 35, 44. So people in the middle age, they are with this kind of weight, overweighted. You know that in Europe, 27, you are considered like obese. So it's, it's very big. And now the worst is there, the obese people. And you see, is something preoccupying me, not for the people that are old. I don't care. Excuse me to say that I'm old, so <laughs> I don't take care of them. But this one, 1824, this is preoccupying me. What is their future? What is their future? We must do something. And here you see the other number. I will say that is normal with age, we take weight. We know that. We fight. In California, they are all running in the street to avoid that. Perfect. I applaud with my two hands. Now, what is the prevalence? So only to, to do a, a summary of what we saw. Nearly one third of the American population is obese. 28.5% is only a fact. Keep it like that. The peak at age 45, 64. No, that we were knowing, but we were not knowing that one third were obese. More than one third is overweighted. In my country, that is America, <laughs> one third plus one third is doing two thirds are overweight or obese. Too much. Too much. So everyone was saying, and I saw that in the past years, ha, big problem, sleep duration and obesity. So I wanted to verify that. What I did, here I put the hours of sleep. Here I put the age group. Here you have, in green, you will have the, the normal weight, overweight, and obese in red in orange overweight. So we go. First one. First, something, a stone in the field of the sleep uh, specialist, but that is practically 10 years that I publish on that, is not eight hours that we are sleeping. Is wrong, is seven hours. From where is coming this legend, eight hours. Yes, we want all to sleep eight hours. Try to sleep nine hours per night during one week. And come to see me, because I must record you. <laughs> the second thing is now, if I put somebody overweight, my population overweight, you see, it's not so much variation. Not so much. Here, yes, for the age, but you see, it's the same variation that the normal one. Now the obese. But surprise, is not here. Is here and here. Is low for the young people and only for them. Not for the, the rest of the population. Again, is a fact. Give me the explanation. I will leave you that. So, what we can say? Overall, obese individuals have shorter sleep duration than those with normal weight. The difference in sleep duration is significant only in individuals younger than 45 years. Keep that. I will come back in one moment. Now, I was saying, I am with the general population. Maybe I must look at the health status of these people. The health status of the people is determined by 
your medical condition and your psychiatric condition. Because for sure that psychologically, if you are disturbed, you can have variation of point or of way. So I wanted to see that. I put here the percentage. Here I put the category 18 to 24, the healthy people. Healthy people, they have no medical condition, no mental disorder, zero. Non-healthy, they have a medical condition or a mental and or a mental disorder. And I did that for each category, again, 10 by 10. So I look at the first, 18 to 24. And here you must do something like me, like that you will understand more quickly. 38 plus 20, overweight plus obese, okay? Remember, overweight, obese. We have 58. I will compare now when they are non-healthy. Not a big variation, 56, not significant. I look now, 42, 25. Do we have a big variation? No, not really. 65, 65, okay, we 67. Not so big and uh, is not significant anyway. 35, 44 of age, I compare. So 46, 26 for the healthy, 38, 31, a variation but not so big, not significant. Now 45, 54, 42, 27, and 38, 37. You see the medical condition, mental disorder are playing. Now I can look more quickly for the other category of age. With age, unfortunately, you have more chance to be uh, uh, with a medical condition or with a, med a psychiatric condition. And you see, the biggest difference is when you are more than 65. So what I will say about that, that the individuals with medical mental disorder are more often obese than healthy individuals. Different scenes in participants 35 years or older. Healthy individuals are significantly more often overweight than those with medical mental disorder. Okay, with that, I have finished with the easy part. Now I want to look with the diagram of Venn. I like diagram of Venn. It's giving you the key and it's very visual. Here I did something curious. I took all, because all what, generally speaking, is a researcher ability. People that are depressed have a problem with insomnia, pain, and obesity. How in the population of people with a diagnosis of depression, major depressive disorder, MDD, how these people can be described? So very quickly, we have that. And that for chronic pain, you have inside of MDD 63.7%. Eight years ago, perhaps a little more, nine years ago, with uh, Schasberg, we were publishing the first paper showing the link between MDD and chronic pain. And believe me, it's totally overlapping, totally. So 63.7% is not a surprise. Insomnia symptoms and MDD is very well known, 62.1, and obesity, 37.9. Now, how they are overlapping? You remember that for the diagram of Venn, nothing is proportional in their figure. You see 24.3, uh, this is not a surface that is proportional to the Percentage. So you have something very interesting is that insomnia, as you see, have 24.2% sharing with chronic pain, but only 8.5% with obesity. And it's true in the two directions. If you are obese with insomnia, zero. 8.5 is not zero, is, is important, but not so, not the number that you can expect and insomnia in the direction of obesity, 8.5.
So what we can say about that? Obesity rate in MDD is 1.5 higher, is present in 4% of MDD in the absence of insomnia or pain, is associated with pain only in 8.4% of MDD. That is something very important because it's not going in the direction of what we have in clinic. In the clinic of sleep, we have not that exiting like that. But for sure that we have a bias because they, if they come in a sleep clinic, if for one big reason, is it because they have a problem of sleep associated with both pain and insomnia in 17% of major depressive disorder. But you will say, okay, so insomnia symptoms, three nights per week for more than three months, now it will be inside of the DSM-5, are highly prevalent in MDD, 62.1%. And this is occurring in the absence of pain and obesity and are associated with chronic pain in 24.3% of MDD. Chronic pain, you see, more than three days per week for more than three months is also highly prevalent in MDD. I put that to show you that I was taking only the serious symptom, not something that was only symptomatic at the moment of the interview and occur in the absence of insomnia and obesity in 14% of MDD, remember 8.5% in the other case. Now, you can say, maybe it's somnolence. I did a mistake. I don't think that is insomnia, is somnolence. So I took my people that uh, are in the MDD, that uh, 908, and I looked at somnolence, so chronic pain is the same, obesity, and this time here we have somnolence. And we look at the interaction and look, it's sure that is less than 8.5%, but still is 6% there. So somnolence is playing practically at the same level that insomnia. And that is also very interesting. I leave you for the interpretation. Somnolence symptoms, so excessive amount of sleep. I am telling you how I was taking in somnolence. Amount of sleep, excessive sleepiness are highly prevalent in MDD, 49.9%. So I will go faster there. The triple association somnolence, pain, and obesity was found in 14% of the cases. Now, you can say, Okay, not only depression, I want anxiety. So with anxiety, we have more people. 4,272 is my N. So the prevalence is 26.8%. How this is interacting with insomnia, pain, and obesity. So it's exactly the same thing. And you see, insomnia, obesity here in this population of anxiety disorder, only 3.9%. So the stress by itself, you can put a question mark, maybe is other interpretation there that we can have. So it's present in 10.1% of anxiety in the absence of insomnia of pain. You see that? Associated with pain in only 7.54% of anxiety and associated with both pain and insomnia in 9% of anxiety. So this is practically the same. I was looking by symptoms, and I can tell you this is solid results, also for the chronic pain. And you see, the chronic pain has a prevalence of 49.5%. And in the longitudinal data that we have, we see that this anxiety and the sleep disorder are all consequences of this chronic pain and not the sleep is not the consequence of, uh, for uh, uh, obesity. So generally speaking, when you look at obesity, you must always look to pain or you miss a big factor, confounding factor. Uh, the same for somnolence, chronic pain, 21, you see, somnolence. And when we look at the interaction, you see, 2.9. So it's practically in the same range. So what is very interesting is that in the two cases, 
for anxiety de disorder and for depression disorder, we have an influence on sleep, but is equal between insomnia and excessive somnolence. I, I did exactly the same kind of uh, analysis. It's not important. I am coming on the last point that I wanted to do. So medical condition, because the question could be, is not only a psychiatric condition, uh, only a, a condition of sleep. It could be a medical condition. So with medical condition, how this is going, insomnia, pain, and obesity. And here, I can tell you, I was very surprised. We are again in the same range. So the story of obesity and sleep is working, but the direction of the sleep disorder, insomnia or somnolence, is equal between, that is the fact. Now, what uh, it means and why we have this kind of thing, I have some hypothesis, but I will discuss that uh, later. So, again, obesity rate in medical condition is 1.6 times higher than among participants without medical condition. And uh, so we find exactly, so the prevalence you see of insomnia symptoms, 36.5%. Here also is something that when you do, it means that when you do some analysis in your own data, also for the clinical data, you must take that in account. The medical conditions are playing fully inside of your samples. Somnolence, we have exactly the same results. So I go very fast, you see, 4.6% in the overlapping between obesity and somnolence. Exactly the same. We have, so I am at my conclusion. Cathy, we, sorry to be long. Shorter sleep duration is associated with obesity only among the younger participants. That is, what we find, we found inside of our sample. The presence of a medical and or mental disorder is associated with a shorter sleep duration, again, only on the younger participants. Obesity increases the likelihood of depression and medical condition, but not anxiety disorder. And that also is very new. And finally, in medical and or mental disorder, obesity is most often associated with insomnia, hypersomnolence, and chronic pain. Thank you very much.